my side all along. Yet I clung to it, steeped as I was in the stench of blood and beasts. Good hunter, have you seen the thread of light? My guiding moonlight. Just a hair, a fleeting thing. When you think back to the most iconic bosses in gaming, what comes to mind? Most of you would probably think of Souls-related bosses. For the Destiny universe on my other channel, you would think raid bosses. But when I think of a boss that represents the word iconic, I can't stop thinking about one that was found in the Old Hunters DLC for Bloodborne. Bloodborne was a special game that unfortunately is stuck in its own version of the Hunter's dream. Almost poetic, isn't it? The game in which you're trapped in a nightmare is in its own version of a licensing nightmare with Sony and From Software. Bloodborne had so many iconic moments that I believe separated from the rest of the From Software catalog just enough for it to be my favorite world to play. If you can't play this game, I do recommend Lies of P, as it's the closest to Bloodborne out there, and it's just so good. Bloodborne in its original state was a fantastic game. But I would say most people agree that the boss quality for the base game is lacking compared to the DLC. Don't get me wrong, there's still some great bosses, like Father Gascoin. <laughs> oh no. Oh! What the? Oh my god. Oh my god, is this ever painful? For arachnophobians in the comments, we have Rom the Vacuous Spider, which was your hardest boss in the game. But between Gascoin, Rom, and maybe some smaller bosses like the Shadows of Yarnum, there wasn't much until the end game with good old Garman. Oh, you're telling me you're gonna. Oh, Jesus Christ. Now these are boys, are you? Oh my god! That is tricky. A lot of the bosses found themselves in the Chalice Dungeons, and while I appreciate this, I still think that Bloodborne was missing that it factor in the boss department. Sure, the world blended with the combat. And the story of Yarnum is enough to be a great game. But when you hear about characters like Lawrence, Lady Maria, and of course Ludwig, you want to see them. Bloodborne did this great job of introducing names and getting the player base excited at the idea of one day meeting the people who caused Yarnum to go to blood. For Ludwig, this came in the form of Ludwig's Holy Blade, this great sword etched with Ludwig inspired art that was a beastly large sword able to turn into a more humane like straight sword. The lore on this blade states that, quote, a trick weapon typically used by healing church hunters. It is said that the silver sword was employed by Ludwig, the first hunter of the church, and when transformed, it combines with the sheath to form a great sword. It exhibits several departures from the workshop's design, suggesting that the church anticipated much larger inhumane beasts. You may or may not be familiar with the story of Bloodborne, and while I'm not here to break down the intricacies of detail, I am here to talk about Ludwig's piece of it to justify why he was so iconic. Here's a loose version. Explorers find the Great Ones, these eldritch, Lovecraftian, alien gods, and they find their blood in the Thumerian tombs, also known as the Chalice Dungeons. Blood Ministry was a huge part of medicine in our world's history, and people thought in our world and in the game that swapping blood meant getting over an illness. Yarnum had the one magic blood that could do it, and because of that, people came from all over the world to seek help and live in the city with the magic blood. However, just like all great churches, there was bound to be some scandals. And in this world, well, the blood was turning people into mad beasts. This started in a town called Old Yarnum, and would eventually spread. The main piece to take away for this video is that the church didn't want their reign to end, and they didn't want people to know that this was happening. The discovery of the old blood inspired Lawrence, a scholar from the school of Bergenworth, to make a rash decision. He believed that the healing properties of the old blood were divine nature, and was the ideal medium to transcend humanity through transfusing it into human bodies. Despite this, Willem, the lead scholar of Bergenworth, held distrust of the substance, believing the material to be far too dangerous. The two had a falling out, and unable to convince his master otherwise, Lawrence took his leave. 
but promise to remember Willem's warnings of the danger of blood and fear it. Fear the old blood. Lawrence traveled to Yarnum along with Mikolash, German, Maria, and many other scholars, showing the healing properties of the ministration of old blood, and eventually forming the healing church, becoming its first vicar while distributing the healing blood throughout the entire city of Yarnum. But when the infected blood began circulating, Lawrence was among those who fell victim to the plague and transformed into the first cleric beast in history and put to death. Ludwig was the first rank of many healing church hunters to come, many of whom were clerics. Under Ludwig's leadership, the healing church gained its own core of hunters. Ludwig trained his hunters to be honorable Spartans and even trained ordinary Yarnamites. That's a funny word, Yarnamites. Effectively uniting the populace and using it to combat the scourge. This was supposed to be kept under wraps, but they couldn't contain the scourge anymore. It's incredibly sad. I always love the detail of holding out fire in front of the beasts of old Yarnum, since this was their biggest fear from the healing church hunters who burned down their city. Ludwig wielded a mystical greatsword that he discovered, allowing him to channel the cosmos. He looked to the sword and the tiny beings of light surrounding it for guidance, allowing him to empty his fears, even in the middle of a hunt. It is implied the sword itself is sentient to some degree, which influenced Ludwig greatly. Ludwig was incredibly respected, but you might wonder where he went if you played the base game. That secret gets peeled back in the Old Hunters DLC, which would release about a year after the main game. And madness, not an ailment, not a race, but a foundation. What could drive a cleric to the brink of insanity? What you're about to open the door to is a fight against Ludwig, a cleric, a hunter, responsible for the deaths of thousands of beasts. Ludwig will be known as the Accursed, a respected, noble god to his white-coated peers. It would be a shame to the church. No, it would be a shame to every hunter if he was transformed into beast. A sign of the world lost. Open the door to what From Software fans had to fight in the Old Hunters DLC. A fight against the First Order Hunter, Ludwig the Accursed. Players couldn't just click the Old Hunters DLC. They had to find it the way the Old Hunters had to find the Fishing Hamlet. For the Old Hunters, it was seeking a small village and finding the Great One, Koss. For us, it's getting grabbed by the lesser amygdala hanging on the side of the church, propelling us into their nightmare. In the nightmare realm, we see a very distorted version of Central Yarnum, and I always wondered why. Is this nightmare in the vision of Lawrence? Is this the real world when you have enough insight to see its madness? Either way, there's a lot of very spooky tales you might find scattered in this place. For our story, we journey to the first major boss of the DLC, and it's most iconic. Down past the Nightmare Church and to the underground corpse pile sits a church entrance. And then this happens. Delicious! Oh, that's eyes in your mouth. Ooh, Ooh that was gross. Have mercy. Have mercy upon us. What's the hell? <laughs> oh! Why, why am I even. It's like. A dude became a beast. It's like a horse. And some other weird eyeball. Alright, welcome to my nightmares. Oh! Friendly. Oh my god. It's like a horse man. Oh no, is that oh that's just splashing blood, that's fine. The music is so good. Uh oh. Oh, rampage. Oh god. Watch out for that. Okay, back in a way. It does look like a horse, doesn't it? Oh, oh my god. 
he's got horse f***ing. Okay, there's some rain. Oh, what's that? What's happening? Oh, shit. What's happening? I don't think so. Oh! Alright. Oh. He kept trying to kick me with his, like, 17 legs. What is that? What is that goo? Oh, that was from that extra mouth, isn't it? Oh! Shit. Damn it. Thought I got good dodges on those last two. Oh my god. Oh god, I need to heal. Oh god. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Oh. Holy crap. Alright. All right, he has nice big AOE. Ludwig is a cleric, and clerics were said to have been ravaged by the scourge of the beast more than any other. Ludwig was trapped in this place after him, Maria, and Lawrence had either hunted costs or at the very least mutilated the inhabitants of the fishing hamlet. Ludwig is trapped and mad, and he brings that to this fight. He is incredibly strong, gigantic, and unique to every bit of his body is partially what makes him the most iconic. Not to mention Ludwig's music. I mean, have a brief listen. Zuli the Witch pointed out in her video that one of Ludwig's eyes is cloudy from the scourge of beasthood, while the other one is humane. This can be said for his whole appearance. He's a man who is caught between horse and man, both fighting for power over his body. You can even see that he still has a church hunter outfit on when he's fighting. Eyes are a heavy theme of insight and ascending, and you can see that present in Ludwig's body, and more specifically his neck, uh, mouth area. Ludwig's model is also a technical masterpiece, as he has over 200 bones animated for him just to come to this deformed, broken, bony horseman body. Not to mention, he is so agile for a beast this large without becoming unbelievably unfair. He's just a lot of fun to fight, and when he leaps, he will come down on you. I always love the detail of him dripping some blood to tell you he's right above you. It's horrifying. But this is all to say that you wanted a phase two, and that is unlike anything FromSoft has ever produced. Oh no, what's gonna happen now? This has never happened before. Interrupted the boss fight for a cinematic. Is that the Moonlight Greatsword? The Moonlight Greatsword returned with a bang. Ludwig's Holy Blade was just a nod to his guiding moonlight, his cosmic sword he found all those years ago. The Moonlight Greatsword comes back for Ludwig's Grand Phase 2. Funny enough, this had been on his back the whole time, and you can see it earlier in Phase 1, even in the cutscene. What's even greater is that he is so powerful that when he's about to lose in his Phase 1, his humanity returns to him for one final fight. And although he is the size of the beast, his attacks are much more human. Getting beaten down with the Moonlight Greatsword has to be one of the coolest feelings in any game. But accompanied by this score, yeah, it's special. Um, oh, here. Slash the balls. Oh my god, that is such a travel time. Boosh, boosh. Boosh, boosh. 
Okay. Huh? Huh? This is so fucking cool. No! Let me fucking heal. Somewhere my god. Huge, dark, bombastic. Well, that was outstanding. There's all kinds of slams, slashes, and just really cool particle effects of the green glistening moonlight flying down. This was the most iconic fight in this game for a reason. Ludwig had some extra dialogue after the fight, and if you talk to him... Good hunter, have you seen the thread of light? Just a hair, a fleeting thing. Yet I clung to it, steeped as I was in the stench of blood and beasts. I never wanted to know what it really was. Really, I didn't. <coughs> I can just imagine the voice actor having a blast making those noises. If you wear the church hunter garb, you have a lengthy discussion with Ludwig, and you could even lie to him about how well his men are doing out there. Tell me. Good hunter of the church, have you seen the light? Are my church hunters the honorable Spartans? I hoped they would be. Ah, good. That is a relief. To know I did not suffer such denigration for nothing. Thank you kindly. Now I may sleep in peace. Even in this darkest of nights, I see the moonlight. Oh my, just as I feared, then a beast-possessed degenerate was I, as my detractors made eminently clear. <coughs> Does the nightmare never end? Once you've talked to the head and he gives you the moonlight greatsword, it's just amazing. And to think, this is only the beginning of the Old Hunters DLC. There's a lot more to go, and a lot more that I think I want to cover on the next video. Ludwig was and always will be a one of a kind boss, a boss so iconic that I hope this video has done some justice to his name. And while the beastly scourge continues, it's important that we stay in this universe for one other tale. Ludwig's tragic, sad, hurtful to everyone around him. But there is another hunter who may have guilt that has clouded everything she has ever done, everything she has ever fought for, and an orphan of a great one. Join us on the next episode of Evan Explains, Into Another Door for Another Universe.